Today we're reviewing the RTX 4070 Super, which is a new $600 video card that's joining the 4070 in the stack. 4070 is now typically around $550, bucks, plus or minus about $20. And there are two more Super cards coming out in the next few weeks. There's the 4070 Ti Super and the, and the 4080 Super. The 4070 Ti Super, that was real, by the way, uh, and it's going to continue to be real every time I have to remember the order of that. They should have just gone back to Ultra. 4070 Ti Super launches January 24th for $800, and the 4080 Super launches for $1,000 on January 31st. So you're going to be checking back probably to see how those two reviews go as well. Now, the main changes between the Super Series and their refreshed original parts is going to be to a few different things actually depends on which one. So 48 is the price, 4070 Ti Super, it is the memory bandwidth and capacity, both of them increase in significant ways. And then the 4070 Super, the primary change is the CUDA core count. So those are kind of the three areas to look at for each of these cards to see if anything interesting emerges from the testing. So as a very quick recap then, the 4070 Super will run 7168 CUDA cores, whereas the 4070 Ti, the original, has 7680, and then the 4070 original has 5888. Based on the community reaction we saw in our news coverage, it looks like most of you are interested in the 4080 Super for the price. So we're looking forward to that one. But today we're starting with the 4070 Super, so let's get into the review. This one's gonna be pretty straightforward. So we refreshed our GPU test suite. We've rerun a bunch of new numbers. We've added a couple games, added some more ray tracing workloads with upscaling in some of the tests. So that'll be new. Uh, in addition to those changes and then the standard power tests, we also are adding latency testing. So this is different. We've done latency in the past, but it was a one-off. What we're doing now is integrating latency benchmarks as part of the GPU reviews that we're doing as a core piece of the review. It'll be a permanent inclusion. Uh, we're just starting with something light today to get it started, and then we'll expand it from there. The reason for this is because frame rate has now become so comically high in first-person shooter games that it almost becomes a little bit difficult at a human level to look at numbers like, say, 700 versus 600 FPS and figure out how much you should care about it. So the reason for latency kind of resets the scale, gets us down to smaller numbers that are a little closer to what we think people mostly mean when they are looking for those high frame rates in uh, FPS gaming scenarios. And uh, what we think people really want when they're looking for a high frame rate in those games is to feel more connected with the input and when you're talking about that, you're really talking about the total end-to-end -end system latency. And so that's part of what we're going to be looking at in this. We'll talk more about that section when we get into it later. But that'll be something new and it gives us a different, a different number to look at for the charts. There's a lot of charts today. Here's the quick version of all the data today up front for you to respect everyone's time. So first of all, the 4070 Ti is generally between 6 and 16% ahead of the 4070 Super. It depends on the game and the resolution. Of course, we tested the three standard resolutions uh, and it, it varies a little bit. Generally speaking, call it about 10% for the clustered area for the difference. The 4070 Super typically leads the 4070 base, the original, by 13 to 17% with a couple of breakouts to 20%. There's one that's like 23% uh, in our testing. Against the 3070, the difference is typically 30 to 60% with most of the results clustering around about 50% or so uh, for the differences. So that's the recap. On the AMD side of things, the most directly relevant alternatives are gonna be the 7800 XT, which is about 500 bucks right now. The 6800 XT, which we typically recommend over the 78 XT, that is also about $500. And then the 6950 XT, where it's still available for $600, seems to not really be around very much anymore. And the 7900 XT for about $750 if you go up a price class. And again, we wouldn't be surprised if those prices move around a little bit when this review actually goes live, because at the time we're filming it, that's roughly where they are. Uh, plus or minus 20 bucks for a card launching seems pretty reasonable. So beyond all that, for the differences in the Founders Edition card, it's blackout now, and then they made a big deal about uh, diamond cut edges on the shroud. That's the shiny part here that looks like cheap plastic, you know, the kind that's like in cars, where if you breathe on it, Ron, now it looks terrible. Um, so <laughs> not sure the car analogy is great, especially with Jensen, because now we're going to end up with leather GPUs instead. So I, I take it back. Never mind. Looks great. Don't change a thing. Okay, let's get into the benchmarks. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 4K and rasterized, the RTX 4070 Super ran at 107 FPS average. 
The lows are close behind here, and there's no meaningful excursion in any of the 1% or 0.1% numbers in this chart, so everything is effectively perfectly cascaded from that average. The 4070 Super's result has it roughly tied with the 3080 Ti, and just behind the 6950 XT, which at its lowest was around $600 retail. The outgoing 4070 Ti leads the Super by 8%, with the outgoing 4080 leading by 38%, with its 148 FPS average. Looking down the stack in descending order, the RTX 4070 ran at 93 FPS average, and that gives the new Super a 15% lead. The 3070 ran at 72 FPS average, giving the Super a 49% lead, and the 2070 ran at 49 FPS average. The 2070's result is hierarchically in about the same spot as years ago, with the 1080 Ti as an example about 10% ahead of it still. Compared to AMD, the 6950 XT at its $600 sale price when it could be had for that price was a good deal if you bought it in the last year or so. The closest competitive alternative in rasterization would otherwise be the 6800 XT or the 7800 XT, with the former being superior in this one. The 7900 XT is 16% ahead of the 4070 Super here, but of course also increases the price. At 1440p, the top three entries are CPU bound. The 4070 Super is not though. At 191 FPS average, the 4070 Ti leads it by 7.4%, similar to at 4K, with the 4070 Super leading the 4070 by 15% and the 3070 by 52%. AMD's best competition would be the prior 6950 XT, which is just ahead of the 4070 Super or the 7900 XT if you're spending more money, currently leading at 14%. Against the $500 7800 XT going down in price class, NVIDIA's Super holds a lead of 12%. 1080p is GP bound for these cards, so we'll just skip that chart. Starfield is up next. This has entirely new data because the game has recently had several major updates, so we had to ditch our prior data set to move forward with the most recent patch. There are fewer cards on this chart as a result. At 4K, the RTX 4070 Super ran at 53 FPS average, so the 4070 Ti ends up about 11% ahead with the 4070 Super ahead of the 4070 non-Super by 13.8%, and the 3070 by 52%. AMD still has a strong position in Starfield for GPUs, even with all the recent patches. They were ahead at launch, and they remain comparatively well-positioned now. The 7900 XT leads the 4070 Ti by about 10 FPS, with the 4070 Super led by 30%, but the 7900 XT also costs around $750 right now. At $500, again, the 7800 XT roughly ties the 4070 Super in these tests, positioned just ahead of the 3080 and the 6800 XT. At 1440p, the RTX 4070 Super's 86 FPS average had it about tied with the 7800 XT and just behind the 6950 XT. The 4070 Ti leads by 10% at 95 FPS to 86. Against the original 4070's 79 FPS average result, the Super's improvement is about 10%, and over the 3070, it's about 51%. Both of these results are the same as we've seen elsewhere. An extra $150 or so on the 7900 XT would put you 26% ahead, with the 4080 a bit ahead of that still, and again, that's soon going to be replaced by its own Super. At 1080p, we're limited by other components on most of these devices. The 4070 Ti is pushing up against the boundary for this test. The 4070 Super is still well within test bounds. However, some of the frames are ricocheting off of them. So we'll just move on to a better comparison. In F122 benchmarks at 4K and without RT, that comes later, we tested the 4070 Super at 113 FPS average with 1% and 0.1% lows predictably and properly spaced out. That has it about 117% ahead of the RTX 2070, 41% ahead against the 3070, 15% ahead of the 4070 non-Super, and it has the 4070 Ti ahead of the Super by about 10 FPS or 9%. AMD's 6800 XT does well here and is still priced at about $500, making it a worthwhile consideration, especially compared to the weaker 7800 XT in some of these comparisons, but not all of them. The 7900 XT posts a more meaningful increase with its price hike at 32% uplift, and the 4080 is a step beyond that still. At 1440p, F1 had the 4070 Super at 198 FPS average, with still plenty of headroom for higher frame rate. That allows the 4070 Ti a lead of 8.5% with the 6950 XT, the next GPU beyond that. Compared down the stack, the 4070 Super leads the 4070 FE by 13%, and the 3070 by 42%, with an improvement over the 2070 by 116%. The RTX 4070 Super would obviously not be worth upgrading from the original 4070. We also think owners of the 3070 should keep their cards unless really filling the limitations, as it's still plenty capable. 
a multi-generational jump makes more sense here, like from, say, the 2070 or not on this chart, but a 1070. At 1080p, the top few cards are starting to hit external limitations, but we still have plenty of room to scale on the 4070 series. The 4070 Ti leads the Super by 6%, which itself leads the original 4070 by 8.8%, and the 3070 by 31.6%. At 1080p, the 7800 XT pulls ahead of the 4070 Super. AMD's scaling is strong here in some instances, as we're seeing. Even the 3080, though, is right alongside that new 4070 Super, with the 6800 XT ahead of both. The stack shuffled a bit at this resolution, which is one of the main reasons we test multiple resolutions. Sometimes it reveals architectural differences or an impact of different choices the GPU manufacturers make, like, say, the memory bandwidth, at different resolutions. Rainbow Six Siege is next. This one also appears for our latency testing. At 4K, the RTX 4070 Super held a 153 FPS average frame rate, so the stack arranges like this for NVIDIA. It's the 4070 Ti by 9% ahead of the Super, the Super ahead of the 4070 by 18%, and the Super is also ahead of the 3070 by 37%. The lead against the 3070 is reduced versus Tomb Raider and Starfield whereas the lead against the 4070 is increased marginally compared to F1, Tomb Raider, and against Starfield. And these alternatives include the 6950 XT at a reduced frame rate compared to the 4070 Super, the 7900 XT pushes beyond the 4070 Ti, with the 4080 predictably ahead of that still. The 7800 XT increased its frame rate by about 5 FPS compared to launch testing for us, which helps improve its positioning a little bit, but it doesn't change the stack in a major way. At 1440p, the RTX 4070 Ti's 351 FPS average still has plenty of room before the ceiling, established at 490 FPS by the 4090, and even that's not the full limit. That has the 4070 Ti 10.5% ahead of the 4070 Super, about the same as we saw in previous tests. The 4070 Super led the 4070 by 15%, also about the same as we've seen, and the Super is 43% over the RTX 3070. Not much has moved here. The 4070 Super's relative rank is similar in this test as before. It's just ahead of the 3080 Ti and behind the 6950 XT. Up next, Resident Evil 4. We added this one in the last six months or so. At 4K, the RTX 4070 Super's 71 FPS average has the card sandwiched between the 3080 and the 7800 XT with the 6800 XT ranking just ahead of that. The relative scaling has the 4070 Ti 79 FPS average about 11% over the 4070 Super, with the Super almost 16% improved from the original 4070 and 51% over the 3070. AMD's 7800 XT gives cheaper competition on this raster test, roughly tying the 4070 Super while costing $100 less. The 4080 Super will be a big competitor here though, potentially challenging the 7800 XTX's position in price and performance once the 4080 Super launches. At 1440p, the 4090 illustrates that we have plenty of room to measure the 70 class cards and it establishes a large gap between itself and the next card down, which is the 7900 XTX. For today though, the 4070 Ti's 160 FPS average has it 12% ahead of the 4070 Super, which itself is 17% ahead of the 4070 and 59% improved over the 3070. AMD's 7800 XT is slower than the 4070 Super here, although not by a meaningful amount when rasterized, and the 7900 XT again outperforms the new Supercar. At 1080p, the 7800 XTX sets our ceiling at almost 300 FPS average, the 4070 Ti has plenty of distance from that limiter of course, and it's down at 241 FPS average, leading the 4070 Super's 216 result by 11.4%. As for the Super, it's ahead of the 7800 XT by 9.5% this time, it's ahead of the 4070 FE by 17%, and ahead of the 3070 by 62%. AMD's 7800 XT ran below the 6800 XT in this one, as it does in a lot of games, at 198 FPS average. From the AMD side, the 7800 XT would offer a meaningful uplift, whereas the 6800 XT would come close, but doesn't surpass the 4070 Super in this test. Now for Dying Light 2, another relatively new test edition. At 4K, the RTX 4070 Ti ran at about 60 FPS average, leading the 4070 Super by a reduced and uneventful 6.6%. The 4070 Super leads the 4070 FE by 22.5%, and then the 3070 by 42.9%. That has the positioning against the 4070 a little higher than in other games, although still within a reasonable range. The 7800 XT and the 6800 XT encroach on the 4070 Super, with the 6800 XT basically equating it and providing an indistinguishable experience, while the 7800 XT again leads. This game is fairly heavy on all these cards, helping illustrate clean scaling from one to the next. The 4080 is about 41% ahead of the 4070 Super, so we're looking forward to seeing how close the 4090 and the 4080 Super will be to each other. 
At 1440p, the RTX 4070 Super is 111 FPS average result, has it about tied with the 6800 XT again, or leading the 7800 XT by 8%. The 4070 Ti runs 8.2% ahead of the 4070 Super, with the Super ahead of the original 4070 by 22%, and ahead of the 3070 by 40%. And AMD's most direct competitor here by price would be those 800 XT class cards, with the 7900 XT being the next price class up, and performance class. At 1080p, scaling has slightly improved for the 4070 Ti, now at 9.2% ahead of the 4070 Super. That's consistently increasing the gap as resolution decreases, although not meaningfully. It's just an interesting observation. The gap against the 4070, meanwhile, has diminished by about 1 percentage point per resolution change, now at 19.6%. As for the 3070, the 4070 Super is about 45% ahead of that. AMD's 6950XT and 6800XT remain the closest flanks to the 4070 Super here. We're in the last round of rasterized tests now before we get into ray tracing. For Final Fantasy XIV, this has been one of the most reliable GPU benchmarks we've used in a while. At 4K, the 4070 Ti's 115 FPS average had it just behind the 7900 XT and 9.5% ahead of the 4070 Super. That's exactly in line with what we've seen in other games. The 4070 Super leads the original 4070 by 16%, which is a relatively large gap if these cards are within 50 bucks or so. Nvidia establishes an upsell here by keeping the 4070 on the market while maybe putting some pressure on AMD's $500 price class. The lead over the 3070 by the Super is 44%, again, mostly in line with what we've seen elsewhere, so the pattern has formed. Compared to AMD, the 6800 XT remains one of the most competitive options at the price, with the 7800 XT dragging, unfortunately, behind it. The 6950 XT outperforms the 4070 Super, but is rarely available new these days. We saw a few first-party listings holding on for 600 bucks, but they're dwindling. AMD's lows remain slightly lower than the scaling set by Nvidia here, although not in a way that ruins the experience. At 1440p, we're bound by the CPU on everything ranked 4070 Super and above, so this isn't a useful test, and we'll move on. We'll run GTA 5 at 4K just for old time's sake. Somehow, there's still scaling with our test settings. We might as well just run this until 6 comes out. The 4070 Ti leads the 4070 Super by 6.6%, with the 4070 Super about 15% over the 4070 FE and 37% ahead of the 3070. The gap between these cards is slightly smaller in this game than some of the others. Now we're moving on to ray tracing tests. These results aren't comparable to the previous non-RT charts, unless you just wanted to compare RT to non-RT for some reason. In Dying Light 2 with high RT and DLSS quality or equivalent settings for FSR and XESS, we end up with this chart. The 4070 Super held 43 FPS average here, showing that these cards actually need upscaling to run with these settings if they want any chance of it. The 4070 Ti leads it by 12%, with the Super card leading the 4070 FE by 19%, and the 3070 by 54%. These numbers are basically the same as what we've been seeing this entire time with rasterization, so it paints no meaningful deviation between these NVIDIA devices with RT and DLSS uh, and the rasterized results. The AMD cards tumble down the stack some more, with the 7900XTX now equivalent to the 4070Ti and the 7900XT closer to the 3080 when both are using upscaling. At 1440p, the RTX 4070Ti climbs to 90fps average, now a much better frame rate, leading the 4070 Super here by 11%. The Super leads the 4070FE by 18% and the 3070 by 52%. Again, these are about the same as we saw previously. Unlike rasterization, though, AMD falls behind a little bit here, with the 7900XTX now about the same as the 4070Ti for performance, and the 7900XT closer to the 3080 again. The 6800XT ends up closer to that forlorn 4060Ti 8GB. Finally, at 1080p, the 4070Ti runs at 130fps average, leading the 4070 Super by just 9.5%. The 4070 Super is 18% ahead of the 4070 and 51% ahead of the 3070 once again. AMD's XTX runs just behind the 4070 Ti and ahead of the 4070 Super. Resident Evil 4 with RT is next. This one uses FSR on all cards. The 4070 Super ran at 83 FPS average here, about tied with the 7800 XT and the 3080 Ti. AMD is doing a little better in this one. Uh, the XTX now leads the 4070Ti, the latter of which runs at 91 FPS average and leads the 4070 Super by 9.5%. At 1440p, the 4070Ti leads the 4070 Super by 9% here, with the 6800XT and the 7800XT closer to the 4070 baseline. They held more of a lead over it at upscaled 4K. At 1080p, we're mostly interested in what trend emerges. Here, the 7900XTX pushes further ahead, with the 7900XT now about tied with the 4070Ti. 
The 4070 Ti leads the 4070 Super by 8%, with the Super leading the 4070 by 14%, and the 3070 by 57%. The 7800 XT is about equal with the RTX 4070 baseline. In F1, with ray tracing and without any upscaling, the 4070 Super ran at 41 FPS average, or about tied with the 3080 Ti. The 4070 Ti's 45 FPS average doesn't meaningfully distance these from an experience standpoint. Over the 4070 FE, it's about a 21% advantage for the Super, and AMD's 7900 XT roughly equates the 4070 Ti with the 6950 XT as AMD's closest card to the 4070 Super. The 7800 XT is closer to the 4070 and 4K RT performance. At 1440p, the 4070 Super keeps its lead over the $500 7800 XT and the former 6950 XT flagship, with the 7900 XT posting up between the 4070 Ti and the 4070 Super. The lead over the other 70 series cards is about the same as everywhere else. Power consumption is quick. In a total card workload, we found the 4070 Super to pull 222 watts at the PCIe rails, which has it about the same as uh, 3070 or 20 watts more than the original 4070. That's where part of the performance boost is coming from. Overclocking the 4070 Super put it at 240 watts, which is just below AMD's 7800 XT stock power consumption. Nvidia here remains overall efficient, despite the 20 watt bump from the 4070. Our last testing is for latency. This was conducted on a different test platform that makes the frame rate data completely incomparable to other tests in the suite. We tested using a 360Hz display at 1080p and using an LDAT, which is an external physical measurement device for total end to end system latency. We previously analyzed the LDAT on the channel. Testing was done with a two second shot delay and auto detection on 30 shots. We attempted move on click and flick testing, but found it unreliable in this game. There are problems with muzzle flash detection as well for click to photon, but we filtered for data and eliminated outliers or anything else that had issues. Here are the results. This number represents the total end to end system latency represented in milliseconds. It's not accurate to call this input latency or input lag, as this is the latency for the entire system. So that involves the GPU in the pipeline, not just the input. That's from a click to see in the action. This will directly correlate with FPS in a lot of ways, but sometimes it's possible for the driver to break away from purely being related to frame rate. It's also possible for a higher FPS device to perform worse than another in latency. Also, it's kind of the point to just show a different number. The 4070 Super combination had an end-to-end -end system latency of 19.3 milliseconds in this test. The floor is set by the 2060 for perspective, which was holding us back at 32 milliseconds. Enabling Reflex boosted the 4070 Super performance to 18 milliseconds, a reduction in latency of almost 7% end-to-end, -end. and the RX 6800 XT is about tied with the Reflex-enabled 4070 Super. The 7900 XT had a 15.6 millisecond total end-to-end -end latency, with the 4090 at 11.7 and setting the performance cap. In Counter-Strike 2, we tested in Dust 2 on practice and with a closed lobby without bots visible. The 4070 Super and the 4070 FE both appear in this test. They were about the same here, or within test error. The 6800 XT is also within run-to-run -run variants. The 7900 XT measured 11 milliseconds end-to-end -end here, with the 4090 at 9.7 milliseconds. The 2060 KO set the floor at 22 milliseconds. Just for reference here too, the 4090 was running at 858 FPS average in this test. Which is kind of the point and exactly why we wanted to introduce the latency analysis because it just helps reset the scale and give us a number that's a little more meaningful as a human. This is something we're still working on. We have a lot to do here in the future for latency testing. We plan to continue overhauling and exploring this testing. Currently, the run-to-run -run deviation is higher than we'd like it to be. We'd also like to move to movement testing or flick testing rather than click the photon with the shots. Uh, so that's the next place to try and narrow down the responsiveness. But it does help put things into perspective for how the system feels to play on and not just the frame rate number. That pretty much sums it up. To give a recap again, so the 4070 is sticking around. The 4070 Super is obviously the new one. The 4070 Ti is outgoing. They are not going to continue making those. The 4080 is also outgoing. And so those two cards will be replaced by their new Super variants. And uh, that'll define the new stack for NVIDIA at this sort of high end. So for a quick recap, once again, we're seeing typically about a 10% advantage favoring the 4070 Ti original versus the 4070 Super. And then versus the 4070 original card, the 4070 Super is, let's call it about 15% 
better in most scenarios. And then again, it's got some breakouts higher. It has some that are lower, but it's roughly in that range. 50% uh, or so against the 3070 for the 4070 Super, depending on what game you look at. It's as low as about 30%. It's as high as a little over 60%. Uh, but again, call it 50 down the middle um, for kind of the, the cluster of results. And those are just quick, quick numbers for you. So that's the compacted version. And then again, AMD competes relatively closely in rasterization with the most relevant cards, once again, being the 6800 XT, the 7800 XT, uh, 6950 XT, and then the 7900 XT kind of in that order where the 7900 XT is really only kind of in there as a step up. And if you're going up at that price point, you need to look at NVIDIA's more expensive options too. Uh, for ray tracing, AMD falls behind there. That's not news. That's kind of how it's been going where ray tracing performance right now tends to favor NVIDIA in terms of uh, the, the gap between the cards shrinks. And NVIDIA, if it doesn't have a lead, starts to develop one. Or if it has a lead, it often develops more of one. And using upscaling, if used on both devices, doesn't really change that picture too much. Uh, for value, it at least hasn't gotten worse for the 4070 Super. It's launching the same price the 4070 was. Now, the 4070 has been cheaper for a little while, so its value is maybe uh, it's been stronger than its original launch value, but then the performance goes up on this. Um, one of the larger considerations is that the power goes up, but it's 20 watts. So it's not a crazy power increase, but it is something that allows NVIDIA to push the performance a little more and get higher clocks uh, while sacrificing some of that advantageous positioning on the volt frequency curve for efficiency. It's point in efficiency. It's going to slide on the curve a little bit, but it's not going into, into dangerous territory. So if you're considering this card, the things to really think about are going to be how much you care about ray tracing. This has been the, the story for a while now for the high-end stuff. But if you care about those features a lot, then you really kind of, you're forcing yourself into NVIDIA for the most part. Uh, if you don't care about them at all, then AMD becomes much more viable and it often has a strong value proposition right now. We recently revisited the 7900 XT and uh, at the price we bought it for, we liked it a lot. So you should check that out if you are considering going up a price class and card because that information is still, uh, still pretty fresh, so it's relevant. And that'll pretty much recap it for you. So that is the review of the 4070 Super. Uh, we're going to talk more about value once the next two come out. They are coming out in such close succession here. Um, that we really want to just save that discussion for once the whole stack is fully developed and we have a picture for how the 4070 Ti Super and the 4080 Super perform and then we should be able to, uh, to establish the best choices at each price class at that point. So you'll see those over the next couple weeks. Again, January 31st, it sounds like it's going to be the last one for this new series. And uh, there's a 7600 XT coming out in there as well. That's going to be AMD's new card. That slots in over the 7600. It's at the cheaper end of the scale, so we'll be talking about that too. Okay, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. As always, subscribe for more. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to grab a shirt like this one. These are limited. We are almost out of them. We are only doing one run. It's a great way to support us, and the back of it has tour dates of the most disappointing launches and hardware events of 2023. So check it out on the store, and thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time.